I was born uh, June 20th, 1925. Now, at that time, it was quite common for the births to take place right in the house. So I was born in that house at 336 Jersey Street. I had uh, two uh, sisters and, and a brother. I was the youngest. And uh, my older sister, Kath, Catherine, was uh, 15 when I was born. She was shocked that my parents would still have more children. She said to them, how long is this going to go on? <laughs> she was a very sophisticated high school girl. My other sister, who was about three years younger than Catherine, was Emma, named for my mother. And I was always very close to her. So we lived uh, on an, in an apartment. It was really like a flat above the plumbing shop. My father's plumbing shop was, was uh, uh, on the ground floor. And then we had our apartment, and we rented out an apartment on the top floor. My brother Emil, who everyone called Sonny, because he was named after my father, Emil, why uh, he developed um, polio. And uh, there was a whole epidemic of that. At that time, we called it infantile paralysis. And he was severely ill, and he was about seven years older than I. He was ill to the point that they had to carry him around on a board. So this was devastating to the family. And I think it affected me quite a bit. Well, it affected me all the way through my developing years, partly because there was so much uh, pathos in the family with this kid being, very, uh, from a healthy kid, almost being wiped out, you know? And I think I, I was a terrible, difficult child. Uh, they call me Frank the Crank <laughs> because I cried so much. And I, when when Sonny died recently, I wrote a letter to his daughters talking about that and how we'd go down to the Sadney Matinee at the at the Star Theater at the bottom of Jersey Street, and uh, I, they knew him there, and they would take his wagon and put it in the ticket booth that no one would take it, and it was a matter of coasting down the hill on the wagon and then pulling the wagon up. So I was, uh, that's the way I got around. And we went all over, and since he was seven years older than I, why, he more or less determined where we were going. We'd go to the Five and Dime. In those days, why, you'd travel some miles in, a, in this wagon, you know. I went to PS 17. The, uh, the class, classes there, that was in the midst of the Depression. Now, see, I was born in 25, so I was going there in the 30s. And uh, now we have welfare, but uh, then there was called relief. And uh, most of the, many of the kids, especially most of the Italian kids, were uh, on relief. So that meant that uh, they had a, the government supplied them with shoes and they had school lunches and things like that. In elementary school, I was just about halfway through there. I think it was around the fourth grade when they decided I should skip a grade. I then went to Curtis High School, which you could see on the next hill. I had one year of college before I was in the service, see, from 17 to 18. One time I went to a show, I guess it was at the Roxy, and they said, we have America's youngest trumpet virtuoso, and this young fellow came out in his teenage years, and he played a trumpet solo, and they put that spotlight on that trumpet and there was that spectrum. He says, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so uh, I was probably about near 13 years old then. I graduated high school in 42, so this was getting into those, uh, those war years, you know, say, uh, 40, 41. In the high school orchestra that we had at Curtis High School, we formed a little uh, band. Uh, and uh, we played our first jobs, and I got my first dollar there. I guess we got three dollars a job, 
And I still have that dollar in my studio now. Uh -huh. for, and we called that group the Silver Syncopators. Uh -huh. And of course, our favorite song was uh, In the Mood. So, uh -huh. And we all idolized uh, the uh, name bands. And when we did play hooky, which was not much, why we'd go to the Paramount Theater and see Harry James and Tommy Dorsey, and we knew all the, the players. And uh, that, that was like kids follow uh, athletics, why we follow those name bands. Well, we formed this band. We went to auditions also. There was one in New York City, and these different bands would try out for different resorts. Well, we got the top dollar, and the top dollar at that time was $12 a week, room and board. And you played from nine at night to three in the morning, seven nights a week. In this Loon Lake, we played the 10 weeks, and this was, there's a movie called The Summer of 42. I don't know if you saw that. But you see, that was at the beginning of the war, and there was gas rationing. So there, was, there were very few client, uh, uh, guests there at this place, you know. But with the money I made from that, I paid for my first semester in college. And when my father saw that I was doing all right there, he paid for the next semester. When I went into the service for three years, I had the GI Bill of Rights. I finished up my bachelor's, master's, and all but the last two courses of my doctorate on the GI Bill. We got into this uh, tra training camp, and uh, incidentally, years later, I went back there, and there was no sign of that base at all. It became a, a community college after the war and then became a park. We had uh, this um, leave, and that was the only leave I ever had in the Navy. I was there almost three years. It's the only time I ever got home. Mm -hmm. Well, when I got home, Father said, any place you want to go, we're going to go, the whole family will go. So we went up to New York City, and we went, had dinner at a place where they had the three sons. Uh, you might remember Twilight Time. There was a big record with the organ and uh, uh, accordion. We went to the Hotel New Yorker, where Benny Goodman was, and Gene Krupa just joined him, and uh, this was a historic thing, Gene Krupa with Benny Goodman, and they had the ice show, where the ice would come out from underneath the band, and they'd, they'd have this ice show right there, go right up to your table and stop. And uh, then we went to Cafe Society Uptown and saw Teddy Wilson. So Pop says, anything you want to do, that's it. So the whole family went there. We had some, uh, some pictures of us there. One leave, that boot leave, I came back to Samson to be sent to pharmacist mate school. I had said, I want to go into music. And they said, well, you have to sign up for six years. And I said, if you made me the admiral of the fleet, I wouldn't sign up for six years. Uh, eventually, my draft came up to go to the hospital course school. All right, the hospital course school was in Portsmouth, Virginia, which is near Norfolk. The class was around 500. And they said, now if you get a certain grade, the top people will get their choice of locations. So I studied very, very conscientiously. At night, I'd get up and go to the head and, uh, and study them. They gave us a test on the skeletal system, and I got some like 97 or 100 on it. The, the teacher put a big red line right down the page with a question mark. Figured I cheated. So I went to the lieutenant commander to complain, got no place, you know. 
This was about a six weeks course. I uh, aced everything, and out of the 500 people, I was tied for second place. They said, you get third class rate now. See, I had been a apprentice seaman, so I, and, and uh, I guess after you get boot camp, you get second class seaman, you get another stripe on here. Mm -hmm. And then for your first stripe here, you become third class pharmacist mate. So I got a rate increase and I got a rate. But they said, we can't give you a choice of location because everybody wants to go to New York and others are complaining. So they sent me to Oklahoma. This was in Norman where the university was. You could go to the interurban, which was like a train station, and take this like a shuttle bus into Oklahoma City, about 15 miles away. My sister Kay, she came out to see me. Uh, so that's, uh, I saw her and then later on, my mother came out to California to see me before I shipped out. By this time, I had a friend named Bob Shadell from Wisconsin. He's a farm boy. Well, we were just kids. We'd, we were like uh, 18 and a half or so. And we'd get some beer, just enough to get a buzz on, and go to the roller skating rink and meet these girls. So each of us got a girl. I got a girl, Edith McCraw, and I think she was 16 years old. See, I was about 18 and a half. And uh, yeah, you got past your shyness if you had a few beers first, you know. So uh, I was at Norman probably about three months or something like that. And we went out together quite a bit. And the family, she lived with her grandparents. I never knew why, but they liked me. And when we'd go out, why, if I had a weekend pass, why, they'd have my bed in the living room all made up. And, uh, and we'd go to church. They had like a gospel church and all that, you know? And then we'd have a picnic and they made uh, cornbread and fried chicken and all that. So it was nice. And I kept uh, writing to her during the, the whole war in Oklahoma. I went to the university and I said, I'd like to practice my trumpet. So they arranged like with the USO that I could practice. And years later, I came back to that same place where I used to practice. I went to the uh, hawk shop and I bought a hawk shop trumpet, which I kept with me for the, those three years. That's the only instrument, because my good trumpet, of course, I left at home. So we were drafted to the uh, Camp Pendleton, Marine Infantry. When well, I was in Camp Pendleton, and when I was there, I went to the Palladium, the famous dance uh, palace, and uh, I can remember sitting on the edge of the, the uh, stage while Woody Herman was broadcasting coast to coast. You know, I was just, oh, maybe 10 feet from him. Uh, right before Christmas, we shipped out. And uh, uh, that's when I was assigned to this uh, battalion, which was the 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Division.